Maybe no place preserves the past like an unpainted wooden building, just blocks from the Mandeville lakefront. Watched over and safeguarded by ancient live oaks, the dewdrop social and benevolent hall looks as it did more than a century ago. A cornerstone bears testament to the founding, a shared date with an improvised style that altered the world of music. Jazz was assigned the birth date of 1895, which happens to be when this building was dedicated in January of 1895. I mean, really, how did this place stand the test of time? Oh, I think that's a question for a higher deity than me. As remarkable as it is for its endurance, for jazz pilgrims from around the world, this is sacred ground. The Dewdrop is now considered the world's oldest, virtually unaltered rural jazz hall. In fact, this building is probably better known outside the country than it is even in Mandeville. There are people all over Mandeville who said, I didn't know that place was there. You know, it almost looks like a piece of blighted property until you get into the history of it. And when you get into the history, you realize that it's certainly worth preserving. This is really one of the great jazz monuments of the world. Uh, you, you just run through the names of the, found, of the people who really created jazz, Tommy Ladner, uh, you know, even Louis Armstrong, the Frick Brothers, the gosh, it just goes on and on. Steamboats from New Orleans would bring in musicians to play the evolving style. This was just a typical, what you'd call a rural jazz hall, but it actually was a community center, uh, part of the real fabric of the African-American community in Mandeville. Simple in construction, it was significant in the social life for African-Americans in the area. In order for them to get a proper burial, the community formed these uh, benevolent societies. Recently, the community came together again as friends of the Dewdrop to preserve the place where the first icons of jazz performed so the next generation could take the stage. The thing that's so unique is that if you find someone who's really serious in music, no matter what type, they tend to cherish the moment of playing in this historic hall. Just to know that people like Louis Armstrong and, and the very, very beginnings of the jazz era started right here at the Dewdrop. So it's, it's an honor and it's a privilege and I don't take it lightly at all. Remaining unchanged, the building still doesn't have electricity. But for Chrissy Miller, a young jazz artist, it does have an energy of its own. It just brings to life this place that has such a rich history to know that hundreds of years ago, people were doing the same thing. They were getting up and dancing around and doing their jigs. When you play, you feel like here's the spirits of your ancestors looking over your shoulder and playing back up. And it, it really, when you start getting in there and hearing music, it's in its purest, oldest form in a sense that everybody is just got that certain spirit that you just don't find or you can't make tangible. It's, it's there, but it's not there. A thought to ponder. Almost 150 years ago, jazz pioneers would come here to play. At that time, others would come from the city of New Orleans and vacation in St. Tammany. These folks were onto something back then, and they had to jump on a boat to cross the lake. We, on the other hand, have the luxuries of the interstates, where your chance to explore the North Shore is waiting just an exit away. The road less traveled is calling. <laughs>